So from the time they crucified Jesus, parted his garments, cast lots, the soldiers sat down and watched him a while. They brought his accusation and put it over the top of his head. Then, 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 after all of that, verse 38 says, were there two thieves crucified with him? One on the right hand and the other where? Two thieves. After all of this, two thieves. The word for thieves is the word lestai. Duo lestai is the word that's used in every critical Greek text, meaning two. Duo is two. Two lestai, two thieves, or two robbers. After they've done all of this to the Lord Jesus Christ, then they crucified two thieves, the word of God says. The one, here is the Lord Jesus Christ, cross. The one they crucified on the what side? Right. right side and the other way. On this left. On the left. And these two that they crucified, after all of this had been accomplished, Matthew tells us that they were thieves. Duo lesti. Robbers. Thieves. Understand what a thief is? All right. <laughs> wonderful, isn't it? Time I'm watching and what happens just with a minute accuracy. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and an other on the left. The word an other is the word one. One on the right hand and one. The Greek text is I, C-I-S. One on the right hand and one on the left. Because there were how many thieves? Two. two. And these two were crucified now, after all of this, next, uh, on one on the right side of Jesus and the other one on the left. And while I'm thinking about this and the inspiration in my heart, the cross was never something like this that we see in pictures today, you know, where there's an upright and a perpendicular. The cross was a tree. And this old teaching that all of us have had, that Jesus Christ in Nazareth, because he was a carpenter, that he made his own cross and that he prepared it, that he finally carried the one he'd made back there in Nazareth, is nice tradition, but it's not the Word of God. And in these classes, we don't care about tradition or doctrines of men. We're concerned about the integrity and the accuracy of God's Word. The tree, the, the cross was a tree, a tree that they just hewed out a little for the feet. You know, they take it and they just cut it out a little bit in here like this. And so their feet would sit in here on this tree trunk. Then they drop it in the ground, just maybe two or three feet, just drop it in a hole. And their feet would only be four or six inches above the ground. And they would be having their feet in there like that. And they put their hands like this across each other on the tree and drive a nail, one nail, through both of those hands. Then they would wrap them with rope or twine around their midriff because in that excruciating hour when they pull on those things, they could tear those, their nail out of their hands and out of their feet, but they still couldn't get off of the cross because they were held by this rope or twine, as we would call it. Now, that's how they nailed Jesus to the cross. And after they had parted his garments, cast lots, sat down, watched him a while, and got this accusation and put it over the top of his head, then, then they crucified two thieves, the one on the right hand and the other where? Now there's another wonderful truth in the Gospel of Matthew, in the 44th verse, which you must check with an, a mind that's wide awake. Verse 44, the thieves, the thieves, how many? Two, both of those thieves, which were crucified with him, cast the same into his teeth. In other words, the people along the way reviled Jesus and said, well, he was, if he really was God, someone had come down off the cross. He could help everybody else, but he can't help himself when he's in the soup. When we got him nailed to the cross, he can't do a thing for himself. If he's really God's son, why don't he get down off of that cross? And both of the thieves cast the same into Jesus' teeth. Both of them. Can you remember that now? Okay. 
That's all the record there is in the Gospel of Matthew regarding this particular incident that we're studying. We're going to skip the Gospel of Luke, uh, Mark tonight because Mark adds nothing to what Matthew has related. But Luke, the 23rd chapter, is the next place I'd like for you to turn. Luke, chapter 23. Luke 23, verse 32. Does everybody have it? Luke 23, verse 32. And there were also two other, what? Malefactors. Doesn't say they were thieves, but these are called what? Malefactors led with him, with Jesus, to be put to death. Two malefactors were what? Led with him. So when they led Jesus out of Jerusalem, toward Calvary, toward Golgotha, the Mount of the Crucifixion. When they led Jesus out with him, Luke tells us that they led with him, led with him to what? Malefactors, to be put to death. Luke talking about the identical crucifixion gives us some added light, which does not contradict its supplements it adds to, but it does not contradict. And Luke tells us that when they led Jesus out of Jerusalem toward Calvary, they led with him to what? Malefactors. Two malefactors. To be put to death. The word malefactors in here is duo to kakorgai. Two malefactors. Entirely different word than that which is used in the Gospel of Matthew. So when they led Jesus out of Jerusalem, they led two malefactors with him. Now, a malefactor is an evildoer. All evil doing is not stealing. Every thief is an evildoer, but not every evildoer is a thief. Every evildoer is a malefactor, but not every malefactor is, I mean, every, what am I saying now? Let's keep it straight, we're will. Okay, I will. Every thief is an evildoer. A thief is a malefactor. But not every malefactor is a thief. If I committed murder, that person, if I did it or anybody else, he would be a malefactor, an evildoer, but he would not be a robber, a thief. But if I stole money from you, then I would be an evildoer, which a turn is a malefactor, but it's, there's a difference. And the difference is stated in Matthew and in Luke. One is, tells us specifically that the two who were brought after that period of time were what? Thieves. But of the others, all we know is that they were evildoers. But they were not thieves. They were malefactors. They were not thieves. What their evil doing was, the Bible does not tell us. But it must have been sufficient weight, sufficient whatever you call it, to warrant crucifixion as far as the populace was concerned. And so here in the Gospel of Luke, we have this tremendous truth. There were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. Verse 33. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the what? Malefactors. One on the right hand and the other on the what? Left. That's right. That's exactly what the word says and that is exactly what the word of God means. When they led Jesus out, they led two what with him? Malefactors. And they crucified those two. Here is the center cross. This is the cross of Jesus Christ. Center cross. When they crucified Jesus, they led two others with him, right? 
and they crucified those at the same time, one on the right hand and the other where? On the left. I'm going to put an M through that cross, so these are the what? Malefactors. Then, time involved, they get to parting the garments of Jesus. They get to casting lots. They sat down a while, they put up over his head his accusation, then after all of that period of time, they bring two others, and those two others are thieves, and they crucify one on the right and the other on the left. And I'll put a bar across those to represent the thieves. Two plus two makes how much? Four. It's an astounding reality. It's been here in the book for centuries. And yet every, every picture you see in the United States of the crucifixion of Jesus, you see a center cross and one cross on each side, right? It's all you ever see. And when you hear the preaching and the teaching, all you ever hear is that Jesus Christ was crucified and one on each side of him. Ladies and gentlemen, we've already discovered something. Either that teaching's wrong or the word of God's wrong, one of the two. Because we can read English, I hope. And if you don't want to read it in English, you like to read it in Greek, we can read it in that too. And tonight, since James Chamberlain's here, we can read it in Aramaic too. <laughs> and all of the texts will corroborate what I'm reading to you in English. Because the accuracy is right here in the text that you have on your laps or in your hands. There's a remarkable thing, however, in Luke 23, which we should note with alacrity. And that is verse 39. And one of the malefactors, which was hanged, railed on him, saying, If thou be the Christ, save thyself and us. But the other, answering, rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? 